So, uh, as I was saying, I just uh, copied the um, set peak code and, and zip it right here in the set peak folder. Uh, here you have the whole original set peak uh, code with different versions. You would have the original serial version here, which is the one that we based all the versions that Manuel presented on. Uh, you have also some uh, OpenMP versions, but uh, we will work with the PW folder, which is the one for this course. And here you have um, the different examples that were uh, presented before by Manuel. So uh, the serial would be the first version. I can just uh, get into it. Um, again, just in case you will need to do the uh, modulate load that I did before. And then we could use PW report over the present folder to see what uh, opportunities or what uh, loops can be found in the code. Okay, so here you have some insights. Uh, I guess that you attended the previous uh, sessions, so you are already familiar with all this information. And in particular for setpick, what we want you to focus on is the particles.c uh, file. Okay, so for this specific file, we invoke PW report and you see the number of uh, analyzable functions and loops. And the loops is the thing that we are interested in. So actually we can run PW loops as suggested down here to see uh, which loops are not anal analyzable or just without uh, any argument to see which loops are, uh, are there either an analyzable story or not. So these are all the loops. There are uh, a lot of loops here, but we are interested in this function as Manuel said before, because we, we have run gprof and we saw that the uh, hotspot is there. Of course, you can use any other profiling tool uh, instead of gprof. So you can actually uh, filter for that function using this. And now we see the three loops that are present in the spec advanced function inside particles.c. So like Manuel said before, initially they are not analyzable and we want to get them to be analyzable by parallel work. So parallel work can provide us with, with compute patterns, the opportunities, if there are any, and even maybe it can be automatically parallelized by the PW directives tool. So uh, what we would do right now is add the non-analyzable to see why there is not an X here in the analyzable code to see the reasons. This is what what Manuel presented before. And then we can focus on the loop that we find, uh, that we know where the hotspot is, which in this case is the uh, one at line uh, 677, and inspect the different reasons why it is not analyzable. For instance, the uses of the, the, the part field of the spec struct. So this is what Manuel uh, went over before in the, in the slides. You can see the details there of which parts are addressed in every one of the functions here. But we can move to, uh, for instance, the last uh, serial version that we have, sorry, that we have over here, which is the number uh, four, which is the one that went uh, through outlining, uh, gather scatter, then it was, uh, inlining was applied, then the array of structs uh, were removed and then loop fishing was lastly applied. So again, you can do PW report to see what the difference is with before we have more analyzable loops and we can see which those loops are. Again, I will get a lot of uh, output. So I want to uh, filter again for the, in this case, the function has been renamed after the um, Code transformations after the refactoring. So we want to filter by spec advanced outline. So now the loop of interest, which is the one on line uh, 755, it is analyzable along the other two in these functions. And parallel analysis is able to find a spark reduction and a for all compute pattern. And it determines it determine, sorry, that there is a multi-threading opportunity here. And indeed, you can actually parallelize this with PW directives. Okay, so if we, were, if we wanted to do so, we could actually uh, invoke this function over here. I will just give it a try. Uh, 
by default, it will parallelize for OpenMP, but I could change that with uh, OpenACC. So if we do that, we will have, uh, can use practicals openmp.c, and we should have the function over here with all those promise. Okay. Here it is. So these are the promise that were inserted uh, automatically by uh, PW directives in this new version. So I'm thinking that I could have just uh, made the diff for you. Maybe that's cool. And there you are, the directive that I was showing and the direct, uh, different updates protected with Atomic. Okay, uh, so uh, this is about the uses of power analyzer, the two main use cases that we think are, are useful for you today in this session, which is PW report and PW loops with and without the non-analyzable uh, flag. And then uh, I can show the different uh, scripts or how uh, you can experiment with the, with the different versions of uh, the M2D code in, in Cori. I don't know if Manuel, if you have any remarks regarding the uses of Analyzer before. Yes, just uh, say that if they want to parallelize the opportunities, just a reminder that PW uh, Parallel Trainer has more options available in the UI than the options that you have available in the command line of PW directives, especially when you need to provide additional hints about array ranges that Parallel needs to implement the implementation of the of the code. So in those cases, we recommend Trainer because it's easier to use and easier to provide and know what you need to provide to the tool. Um, Directives is doesn't have all the uh, the features enabled uh, at this at this moment in this version of Analyzer. Just that. Yeah. So picking on that, I will uh, very quickly show you how you would uh, use Trainer if you want to give uh, to give it a try today. Uh, just load the module. Bear in mind that we are in the in the login node. So maybe you want to actually execute it uh, from from, for instance, the GPU node, like we did in the in the previous sessions. Here I have the, the code from the previous session, actually. So I will open a new project. Uh, this should be in my home. Uh, this is the septic folder. Uh, we could open uh, its individual folder as a project or either just the, the root uh, PW folder. So whatever you are more comfortable with, I will just here, pick the, the root folder. And then we could, for instance, go over what we just did, which was this file here. Okay. And let me close the version manager. And you could go here, I think it was over line 600 something. Yeah, this one. So this is the loop that we parallelize with PW directives. And here you can do the same through analyzer and also uh, generate the versions for the GPU or OpenCC. So, yeah, so you see the same thing that we did with uh, PW. What? What? Uh, oh, okay, Manuel. Yeah, I forgot about this. That uh, this is an older version of Trainer. For some examples, it may not work. We need the updated version. Mm, okay. But okay. well, the idea the idea would be the same. I mean, uh, it's a good takeaway that. Mostly, or everything that you can do uh, with analyzer, you can also do visually with trainer. And for cases such as the one that we have today, it's very useful to have a graphical user interface that you can experiment uh, quickly with uh, and switch between different versions, like we did in the in the previous training sessions. So, uh, in any case, for today, let's stick with with analyzer.